Good morning, everyone. Go ahead and take a seat. We're going to get started. Welcome to the Colorado Center for Aging 2022 Celebration Breakfast. I'm say who's excited. So, we're going to ask you some questions. Are you glad to be here seeing each other in person? <laughs> Who here is excited to celebrate this last session of legislation? Oh, didn't you just do that? No, I'm not. It's oh. over. Oh. <laughs> Aren't you glad? The session is over. <laughs> 650 bills later, we're so glad. Yes. So welcome here to this uh, gathering this morning. On behalf of the Colorado Center for Aging um, and all of the board members and staff, if you are a board member or a staff person, raise your hand. Um, there they are. If you have questions about the Colorado Center for Aging, these are the people to talk to. Um, but on behalf of all of us, thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, it's great to see you all to celebrate. Um, and we know that you support what we do and older Coloradans, so thank you for being here. My name's Andrew Davies. I'm the executive director of the Colorado Center for Aging. And good morning. I'm Kelly Blair Roberts, vice president. Oops, I was vice president. Now I'm president. <laughs> <laughs> She's my boss. <laughs> so um, uh, also welcome to those who are joining us from afar, live streaming. Uh, thanks, Gary, for pitch hitting um, and doing the live stream this morning. Everything that we do with the Colorado Center for Aging, we want to be statewide. We want to be representative of our state. And so everything that we do, uh, we broadcast so that people in the far corners of our fine state uh, can enjoy what we do and participate in the goings on. Uh, so this morning, here is, oh, yay, confetti. <laughs> this is the schedule of the morning. Kelly, talk us through it. Well, we're doing what you see there as the welcome and the vision of the Colorado Center for Aging. Andrew's going to share the top 10 legislative wins that were in the session this year. We are very pleased to be able to present some awards today our public service appreciation wards, and many of those will actually be in person this year, unlike last year. Um, we are going to have a presentation about the, colder, the Older Coloradans Act. Jared Hughes is going to join us um, by Zoom, and then we have Kara Harvey and Yolanda Webb here to make remarks along those lines as well. Um, you'll be able to ask some questions of them. And finally, a concluding word from Governor Polis. Um, Andrew, did you get a sense of when he's going to be here? Yeah, at the tail end. At the tail end is when he's going to be here. <laughs> All right. Give it up for Kelly Roberts. Oh, can I just do one more? Yeah, sure. We'll say more later, but we definitely want you to be uh, aware that we are very appreciative of our exhibitors and our sponsors in the back of the room. So thank you all very much. All right, on with the program. So yes, to that end, a thanks to the sponsors. We want to recognize them quickly. Are right, anyone from Dr. Cog here? Give a whoop whoop. There we go. Denver Council, yes, uh, Regional Council of Governments. They are our prime sponsor for this event. Thank you so much for doing that. Anyone from Volunteers of America? Whoop, whoop. <laughs> oh, come on, Carrie. <laughs> I used to work for Volunteers of America. They are an amazing organization caring for uh, America's most vulnerable. Um, and if that wasn't for them, you would not be having breakfast. They sponsored the breakfast. Anyone from AARP here? Give a whoop, whoop whoop There we go, AARP, so glad you're here. They're another prime sponsor and they have sponsored the next event that we're doing next week which we're going to tell you about at the end of the program today. Um, Bright Star, our exhibitors in the back, give, it a, give a whoop whoop for Bright Star. Amazing home care, they've got a giveaway they're gonna do at the end. 
Uh, Society of Certified Senior Advisors back there, give a whoop whoop. Thank you for being here. Great certification program. Um, Modern Mortgage and uh, Aging at Home Partners, they're back there too. Give a whoop whoop to them. And then we've got our secondary sponsors. We've got Palace Construction, the Argyle Uniper, and uh, Web Publishing Services, Corinne and Bryant, where are you guys? They do a ton. Thank you for the Colorado Center for Aging. So thank you to the sponsors. I'm gonna do just a little brief bit about the Colorado Center for Aging, very brief, but some of you might not be accustomed to or know that much about who we are. Um, our motto is raising the voice of older Coloradans. Everybody say, raising the voice. Raising the voice. There you go, that's what we've been doing for 40 years. Before Colorado Center for Aging, we were Colorado senior lobby, and so we were raising the voice of older Coloradans, and that meant raising the voice with advocacy, political advocacy uh, through the legislative process. Last year, we reincorporated um, in 2021, and we have our new name, Colorado Center for Aging, um, and we still have the motto and the vision of raising the voice for older Coloradans, but now we've expanded that to mean more than just raising the voice through the legislative process, but we want to raise raise the voice in any other way that we can. So our new vision statement is this. Our vision when we close our eyes and see the wonderful thing in our brain, it is a Colorado where all older adults have full inclusion, appreciation, and respect, raising their voice and being heard on the range of issues which will increase their own thriving and the well-being of all Coloradans. And because that is our vision of all older Coloradans being heard, our mission is to seek, create, and provide forums for those voices to be heard. We want them to be heard in meaningful and impactful ways so as to create, sustain the age-friendly community which they and we all seek. So everybody say, raising the voice! That's right, so we want to do it in all of these different ways. We've got four values, well we've got many values, but four that we like to bring to the fore of what Colorado Center for Aging is all about. The first one is inclusion. Uh, we know that all older Coloradans have value, all have a perspective, all have a voice, and all need to be heard. We want to be inclusive of all different kinds of people. That means demographic inclusion, race, ethnicity, gender, all of those sorts of things. Um, it means geographic inclusion. Uh, we have members in half of the 64 counties in Colorado. Our goal is to have members and representatives in all 64 counties because we want to truly represent Colorado on the whole. And then inclusion also means political inclusion. We are a nonpartisan organization. We have been for 40 years. And we firmly believe that it takes all perspectives politically to have those conversations to meet out the best legislation for everyone. The most long lasting legislation are going to be those pieces where all of those conversations have been had and all of those perspectives. So inclusion is what we are all about. Give me a whoop whoop. Yeah, we know you're about inclusion, very good. Veneration, if you have a better word than this, let me know. My board doesn't like this word, but veneration, uh, this gets a, a little bit to, to home for me. Um, sometimes when we speak of older adults, sometimes the language goes to something like this. We just want older adults to be heard, or we just want older adults uh, to have a place at the table, um, or we just want them to have their basic needs met. Part of my story, and, and uh, I'm not going to go long here, is that you know I've done nonprofit, but I've also been a pastor, um, and I'm not going to get Jesusy on you, so don't worry about it, okay? Um, but in my lifetime, whatever wherever I have lived, whether it's Seattle or Iowa or Pasadena or Chicago or New Jersey or here in our fine state of Colorado, I have always had through the church older adults who have poured into my life. They have mentored me, and I am the person that I am today because they took time to invest in me. So there is no replacement for the wisdom of older adults. There's no replacement for that. And so we don't want older adults just to have a place at the table. We think that their voice should have a place of primacy. Can I get an amen? amen. Sorry, I got a little Jesus-y on you. <laughs> 
But yes, we want older adults to be venerated, for them to be esteemed, and for them to be heard maybe more than others because they have lived experience for which there is no replacement. Third value is this, creative problem solving. And this goes along with our new reincorporation. Some problems or opportunities are best met with legislation. And that's what we've done for 40 years. But with this reincorporation, we want to do creative problem solving opportunities, addressing issues of older adults through legislative means, but also other, or other means, um, other forums. And that's why we seek to create other forums um, for those issues to be addressed. So we want to be creative with how we address problems. And then lastly is relationships. We know that sometimes it's just as important how you do things as what gets done. We want to treat people with honor. We want to treat people with kindness, with respect. And we have a lot of fun with our meetings. Um, and this also goes with uh, the legislators and our relationships with them. It's not just about having that elevator speech uh, where we talk about a specific piece of legislation. But we want to cultivate relationships with real people, real legislators over time to figure out who they are, them know who we are, so that we can make Colorado a better place for older adults. And raise the voice. Everybody say, raising the voice. There you go. You guys are great. So now we're going to move on to the top 10 legislative wins for 2022 for older Coloradans. So just so you know, we have a number of different members, over 100 members. We get together on Mondays and have an advocacy committee meeting, and we talk about different legislation. And we weigh in, and sometimes we support, sometimes we oppose, sometimes we support so much that we actually do advocacy and talk to legislators and whatnot. There have been over 650 bills this session for legislation. And have we talked about all of them, Rich and Jeanette? Have we, how many have we talked about? <laughs> Over 100, yeah, over 150. We've talked about a lot. So this, could, this list could be really long, but I'm only going to give you the top 10. And I picked these 10 because it gives you sort of the range of issues that we may talk about um, and weigh in on with the Colorado Center for Aging. So are you ready for this? Yeah. All right, I'm not David Letterman. So I mean, it's not going to be super funny. But um, I want to give you the top 10 uh, legislative wins. So number 10, um, House Bill 22. 1031. Oh, I've had, do I hear some people? Yes, some people are happy for that one. So this is something that we supported. This is something, and all of these have passed. So uh, this is making Colorado a better place for older adults. 1031, up until now, if an older adult was in a wheelchair and it broke down, they had to go through a very long, laborious process a lot of the time to get it fixed. This legislation fixes that so they can do some of the repairs on their own and have other people uh, do those repairs so they can get back into their wheelchair quicker. So after all these, I'm going to go hip, hip, and you say, Hooray! there you go. All right. So 1031, hip, hip. Hooray! All right. So the next, number nine. Uh, House Bill 1278, 1287, uh, protections for mobile home park residents. A lot of older adults live in mobile home parks, and we all know that they need to have their rights protected. And this great piece of legislation did this. It protects against rent increases, undue costs for repairs for those residents, and requires a notice of intent to sell or change the land use. So that's great for older Coloradans, right? Hip, hip. Hooray. All right. Number eight is this. House Bill 1364, Food Pantry Assistance Grant Program. A lot of older adults are food insecure. And this Food Pantry Assistant Grant Program uh, was created years ago. And this session, it was extended for another five or six years. And what this does is it allows grants so that food banks can purchase food and produce from local Colorado farmers and ranchers. Pretty cool, right? Hip, hip. Yeah, very good. Number seven. Oh, this is a good one. 1367. Do people like this one? I know that you do. So discrimination is, uh, there we go. We got some people raising their hands in the front row. Discrimination uh, anywhere uh, in any regard is a terrible thing. Um, and with regard to um, employment, no one should be denied employment because of their race, ethnicity, gender, any of those things, including their age. Can I get an amen? Sorry, I got Jesus-y on you again. I won't do that. <laughs> but this one, 1367, amends the Colorado Anti-Discrimination Anti Act so that remedies available in employment discrimination claims are consistent regardless of the type of discrimination, including age discrimination. Hip, hip. 
Very good. Number six, sales tax exemption for essential hygiene products. Yes, up until now, you had to pay tax on essential hygiene products. But we had discussions amongst us, and we decided that we should support this act so that there would be no sales tax, set tax for those products, because some older adults, um, there's uh, incontinence issues. Yes, fun, right? Hip, hip. <laughs> So we do anti-discrimination, but then we also talk about hygiene products. It's a fun group. <laughs> Next, number five, uh, 1253, adaptive supports in rental motor vehicles. So up until this legislative session, uh, if you were renting a motor vehicle and you had a disability and you had some sort of equipment, um, that it might be hard to find a rental motor vehicle that suited you. But now with this legislation, it provides a renter of motor vehicles um, the right to request adaptive equipment and gives them the option to request the installation of that adaptive equipment. Hip, hip. All right, very good. We're moving right along. Number four, Senate bill. We're into the Senate bills, 22003. There's a shortage in health care workers in our state. Older adults are feeling it. We need more PAs. We need more nurses. We need uh, more of these things. And so this bill here, the Community College Nursing Bachelor Degree Eligibility Act, um, permits community colleges to offer a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing to students who are pursuing a certificate in nursing so we can have more health care for older adults. Hip, hip! Hooray! All right, very good. You guys are still with me. We only got three more. Senate Bill 079, Dementia Training Requirements for Select Colorado Departments. We're learning more and more about dementia. And we know that more and more people have some form of dementia. It's really a big deal and it's a big problem. And more people need to be educated to take care of older adults when that is the challenge that they are facing. And so this is a great bill. It requires that dementia training be provided for staff who are providing direct care services to clients and residents of nursing care facilities, assisted living residences, and adult care facilities through certain departments uh, that are selected in this bill. Isn't that good? Yes. Hip, hip. All right, you guys are awesome. Number two, uh, Senate Bill 083. This one was a little bit hard for me to get uh, my head wrapped around because of the details, but broadband internet is something that we really want to make accessible for older adults. It is not a panacea, but it does great things for older adults. If you have broadband internet and know how to use it, telehealth, right? That's an option for healthcare. You'll be able to Google resources that you might not be able to uh, get to unless you had uh, the internet. Social isolation is a huge problem with older adults. And if they're able to connect with each other through groups on the internet, then uh, a lot of their problems will be alleviated. So this bill directs, and this is a little complicated, but it directs the Department of Transportation to develop an electronic application permitting contract and fee structure to facilitate access to public rights of way for the deployment of broadband internet. Hip, hip! Hooray! More older adults uh, with internet. That's going to be fantastic. And then the last one is this one. Um, Senate Bill 086, uh, the Homestead Exemption and Consumer Debt Protection. This is another one that was hard for me to get my little head around. Um, but this one is good. Um, it makes it harder uh, for the um, for seizure of homestead property to happen for older adults because they might be in debt or under some sort of a contract. Um, it raises those limits uh, so that the seizures are less likely to happen and it includes manufactured homes which a number of older adults are living in, manufactured homes. Uh, so that this makes it possible for them to age in place more and more as older adults. Hip, hip! Hooray! All right. Give yourselves a hand for listening to all of those things, those bills, and many, many more. Thank you to everyone who is involved in supporting these bills, um, because uh, our state is going to be a much better place for older adults because of those and many, many others. Awesome, awesome stuff. So now we are going to have a word from our sponsor, uh, Dr. Cog. So uh, hopefully this video uh, works. I'm not a techie guy, but here we go. 
Hi, I'm Jennifer Reeves with Dr. Cog's Area Agency on Aging. I manage our veteran-directed care and community options programs. On behalf of our agency director, Jayla Sanchez Warren, it is my pleasure to join you here today, even from afar, as together we celebrate Older Americans Month. Dr. Cog's Area Agency on Aging is the largest in Colorado. We serve an eight county region and includes Denver Metro communities and also Foothills communities. As many of you here today already know, our primary mission is to plan and provide comprehensive services to address the needs of older adults and adults living with disabilities. We like to think of ourselves as a one-stop shop for the region's residents and work to do everything in our power to meet the needs of those that we serve. We are so pleased to work alongside organizations like Colorado Center for Aging to advocate for policies and funding that protect and enhance the quality of life for older adults. Dr. Cog is fortunate to have so many great partners in our region. Truly, none of us could do the work alone. I want to sincerely thank each of you here today for your contributions and your commitment. Don't hesitate to reach out to us if you, someone you know, or your organization may benefit from our services in any way. Thank you. Okay. So welcome everyone. It's nice to see you all here and I'm excited to be at an in-person event. It's kind of an awkward new experience, but <laughs> so good to be here. And my name is Chris Gierkin. I'm the Vice President for Colorado, Sen Colorado Center for Aging. And I'm also the Program Manager for Changing the Narrative. And you'll see on your tables there are little cards from Changing the Narrative if you're, if you're interested to learn more about what we do. Um, I would be happy to talk to you about that. So right now we're um, going to go into our awards presentation. And so this year we are presenting our Public Service Appreciation Awards. And I would like to thank all of our awardees. We truly appreciate your support and hard work during the 2022 legislative session to bring forward issues that greatly impact older Coloradans. We're so fortunate to have all of you as strong advocates who recognize the value and contributions older, older adults provide to the state of Colorado. Your work ensures that as we all age, we have the necessary resources, services, and protections needed for aging well in our state. So it's my pleasure to introduce our first presenter, Bob Murphy from AARP Colorado. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> so great to see people in person once again, isn't it? Yeehaw. So I want to first of all thank uh, CCA for putting together this series of events to, uh, to recognize Older Colorado, uh, Coloradans Month. I want to thank them for uh, the series of awards that we're embarking on right now to honor the elected officials who did so much on behalf of older adults here in Colorado for, as, as uh, Andrew said, raising the voice and really celebrating the power of the 50 plus in Colorado, right? And on that note, I feel compelled to gently remind folks that during an election year, 2022, that during a general election, 60% of the votes are cast by those 50 plus. During a primary election, 70% of the votes are cast by the 50 plus. So, Keep us in mind out there. Um, so Senator Rankin, it's my pleasure to begin the ceremonies by, uh, by recognizing uh, Senator Bob Rankin. He and I got together early <clears throat> as a former elected official, <clears throat> excuse me, and a current elected official. Uh, we share a little bit of a dislike for long intros, so we agreed to shorten the intro to give him more time. Um, we all, we all know Senator Rankin. He, uh, he had a 22-year engineering career in, with Ford Aerospace Corporation. And while doing that, while living in Colorado Springs, he, he served the community in many ways, including uh, Vice President of Development for the Colorado Symphony um, and, and many other activities. In 1995, he and his wife Joyce, who is also here today, moved to Aspen and founded Aspen Cybercare LLC. Subsequently, <clears throat> moved to Carbondale in 1995. And I got to 
give a quick shout out for Carbondale, a leading member of our age-friendly community network, and along with Pitkin County and uh, Eagle County, the Roaring Fork age-friendly collaborative up there. So um, I also have to quickly recognize our folks who are here today. Jim Reesberg, who many of you knew from his work in the State House, Gene Knopfels, our state president on our advocacy committee, and Leslie Kalichman, who led our review of 116 bills, Andrew, uh, this, legislative, this legislative session. So Senator Rankin is being honored today for his work, obviously, on the JBC and, and, and his longtime work on behalf of older adults in Colorado, specifically the modernization, modernization of the Older Coloradans Act, which we'll hear more about later, the Colorado Rural Healthcare Workforce Initiative, the program of all-inclusive care for the elderly, and uh, finally, the property tax deferral program, Senate Bill 220. So no more introductions, Senator Rankin. We deeply thank you for your contributions. Did you notice that spry leak up, leap up on the stage by an older Coloradan? So it's, you know, it's really an honor, of course, to be with you all. I uh, feel a, a special affinity and a special obligation since for almost my 10 years in the legislature, I have been the older Colorado legislator. So, uh, you know, in fact, my favorite bill this year was 1035. Yolanda and Kara are going to tell us a lot more about that because we empowered the commission to really go forward from here. But you know, when I was presenting that bill, I, I was interested, you know, and I really, when I first looked at the drafts, starts at 60. You know, older Coloradans are identified at 60. So when I was introducing the bill in the committee and on the floor of the Senate, I like to say I'm really glad to be able to do something for the younger generation. <laughs> because clearly it's my younger generation. Uh, but for sure, you know, I, I think that we have made significant progress this year in, in giving an enhanced updated charter to the commission and setting up, a, you know, some real um, strength in, in human services to support the commission, stabilizing con and continuing the grant program that they uh, will be administering. So I'm really proud of what we've done. I'm really looking forward to hearing about what we're going to do next. Um, I, of course, it's time for Joyce and I are trying to get away for a little while. You can see my office window out of the window here, so I didn't get too far away, but we are looking forward to a little break and coming back and doing some hard work over the summer. It, I just leave you with one thought. When I saw your bills, I saw the discrimination list. And I often say I've introduced, I've introduced, I've just spoken to some of you before in these various settings, and there is no discrimination against older Coloradans running for office. So please come join me. <laughs> hip hip. There you go. All right. I'd like to uh, introduce our next presenter. Uh, Jody Waterhouse, uh, the Secretary of Colorado Center for Aging, and with CU Ann Schutz uh, to do the next award yes. in absentia. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew, and thanks for being here, everyone. I feel like I've had a two-year relationship with all of you via Zoom. So it is fantastic to see you in person and actually put a real-life face um, with the name. I relocated to, to Denver two and a half years ago from San Diego because I was recruited to Anschutz, and I've never lived in a capital city because San Diego is almost like another state um, between San Diego and Sacramento. And so uh, I just personally, um, thank you so much to all of you, specifically to Senator Danielson and Senator Rankin, who have taught me um, about the legislative process. I was here two months and got thrown into my first bill, and it passed. Woohoo! So let's get a Yahoo. Um, and so we're going to work hard on our next bill uh, next year. But honestly, couldn't do it without all of you. Um, your involvement is so important to older Coloradans and into this state. So just a little side note, thank you very, very much, because I wanted to say 
say that in person now that I get to see all of you. So um, I get the pleasure of introducing, however, in absence, because uh, Representative Mary Bradfield is at her grandson's college graduation today in New Mexico. So we didn't feel that we should pull her probably away from that. That's a pretty important event. But let me share a little bit with you about Representative Bradfield. She's an active Republican, as we all know, working at the grassroots, grassroots level, which included several leadership positions. This led to her becoming a candidate for the General Assembly. She was elected as state representative for House District 21 back in 2020. Her first two years in the legislature have been busy. Being in the minority, she took full advantage of the five bill limit rather than sit back and learn by observation. She quickly built alliances across the aisle to co-sponsor bills beyond her allowed five. In 2021, 12 of her 15 bills she sponsored and co-sponsored were signed by the governor. Not a bad ratio. Among these were uh, House Bill 211171, which established the Kidney Disease Task Force. And in 2022, uh, though too early to forecast, uh, 13 of her 18 bills have been sent to the governor. So we'll have to recheck those numbers uh, as of this week. These 13 include House Bill 221035, which is the modernization of the Older Coloradans Act, which we have all heard a lot about this year. And I'm sure Jarrett Hughes is going to talk a little bit about that. House Bill 221057, which removes PIRA limitations and therefore allowing retired teachers to teach again if they so desire without worrying about the effect to their pensions. She is also a retired teacher, so I know that was near and dear to her heart. Um, and she also helped with the establishment of House Bill 221209, which continued the Str Strategic Action Planning Group. So all three of these bills have been approved by the governor. So not too shabby for uh, Representative Bradfield. So on behalf of Representative Bradfield, although I'm not her, I will gladly accept this award and we'll make sure to walk it across the street to her office so that she, she can receive it. So. <laughs> hip hip! There you go. <laughs> Next, uh, third of our five awards, I'd like to invite up Jeanette Hensley, our own Jeanette. Come on up. Yeah. Co chair of our advocacy committee. And she is going to present the award to. Thank you. Sorry, you got a short one here. Got to bring it down. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you. And um, I do get the wonderful ple pleasure to be able to present this award to um, our own Senator Jesse Danielson. She has been an avid fighter for older adults for a long time. And um, she's been in the um, during her eight years in the State House and Senate, she worked alongside the Colorado Center on Aging to protect seniors from elder abuse and provide better medical care for older Coloradans and to make sure that seniors live independently with dignity and security. And just this alone, after having her child right before the session and taking a um, wonderful time off to be able to spend it with her second child, she came back to it the session and she came back with a bang. She didn't just sit back and relax and to say, okay, you know, I'm just gonna kind of go slowly and, and step, you know, st step lightly. No, she came back, she had her, her working boots on and she was ready to take things on. So um, this year she, we, she worked on Senate Bill 154, which was a very um, difficult bill in a way. The bill itself was not difficult. The bill, um, what it does is it increased safety in assisted living residences. And so what it would do is to make sure that the assisted living um, facility director would have at least some experience, at least one year experience um, of caring for people and also supervising the staff. She uh, would also help, uh, the other thing this bill does is to um, assist the older adults with the abuse and neglect. So if there was any abuse or neglect that did happen, and unfortunately we have some absolutely terrible stories 
during um, the session when people would be up there testifying, um, they just, they would make you cry. I mean, they just hurt to see what had happened to some of our older adults in these facilities. And so with this bill though, they will now be able to uh, provide, they have, well, put it this way, the Department of Public Health and Environment will now be able to find them as they should, instead of it only being a $200 a year maximum, no matter how many people were abused or hurt or anything. So now this bill brings it up to, I think it was 10,000, was, was that the right? Per violation. Per violation. Yes. 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 Oh, 2,000. Yeah, it was 2,000 before. Yep. Sorry. So anyway, so that is one of the, that, that one was a, a really important bill for all of us. And then she also worked on Senate Bill 189, which is a pipeline for the geriatric medical providers. Um, so this is one that um, it will create a program to train the new providers specializing in um, care for the elderly or older adults. Um, and unfortunately, this one did not make it all the way through, but it will go through next year. We know that one. It's, she's going to be bringing it back. Mo mostly, it just it didn't die because of the bill itself. It just died because of the time. Um, and then we have Senate Bill 187, the supporting the recovery programs for persons who wander. So, and this one makes it possible for people who are at risk of wandering to participate in life-saving programs that can locate them immediately if they go missing. So, um, this bill will, will be able to bring people back faster than what has happened previously. And then the, the last one is Senate Bill 185, Security for Colorado Seniors. And this measure con continues a program that Danielson started last year to fund critical services through the area agencies on aging, such as transportation, home modification, nutrition, education, recreational programs, and much more. But the reason why this one is very important is that the AAAs already provide those services, and they get the funding from the state and federal government. But they have to follow those very strict criteria to be able to have to do those services. This bill will allow for some innovation and truly to be able to pick up what is needed within that community. What that AAA finds out that they need, this will be able to help them to try to be able to, they'll apply for these grants to provide those services. So, oh, I see we have a special guest here. Let me stop this for a moment. And as we, do you mind? Okay. Don't worry, it's good to see you. I'm not going to introduce you. That's fine. I'll let you go. Well, the uh, Honorable Governor of our state of Colorado, Jared Polis, is here to give some remarks. Why don't we give him a warm welcome? Thank you, Andrew. Uh, and I want to thank Jared from my office, uh, who I think is joining virtually. You hopefully know uh, Jared and his work. Uh, Kara Harvey, Yolanda Webb from Human Services. Uh, we're very excited about the work on modernizing the Older Coloradans Act and advancing uh, the Lifelong Colorado Initiative to make uh, really Colorado uh, the best place uh, to be able to age. Congratulations to the award winners. Uh, these efforts have really helped uh, cement Colorado's statute as among the nation leading statute and make Colorado the best place to live, work, retire, or old. Uh, we have a great deal of work to do, but uh, we see you as critical partners in getting that done. And, and we're really focus, focused on improving the Colorado way of life uh, from birth all the way through death, uh, ensuring no matter what your age is in a Colorado for all, uh, there's a great uh, opportunities for you to thrive. Uh, no matter where you live, who you are, how old you are, uh, Colorado for all really celebrates what everybody brings to the table and wants to make sure that you have the, the tools you need to get ahead. Uh, we know that many uh, older Coloradans on fixed incomes have particular challenges with rising prices. That's why we're particularly proud in the last legislative session, uh, not only, uh, of course, as the homestead exemption continued, but there's additional help for seniors who might be renters who don't qualify for that. And of course, every 
uh, senior will be getting the, the $400 per person, $800 uh, per couple, probably closer to $500 per person, $1,000 per couple uh, this, uh, this August as well to help get ahead on rising prices. Uh, we also uh, cut property taxes. So that's on top of the senior homestead exemption. Somebody had asked that earlier. Is that in lieu of that? No, that's 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 different. So you, that that'll save that saves about two hundred seventy-five dollars for your average homeowner. Because again, who's everybody loves to have you know value increase in their home, but it actually could have a negative if you're on fixed income, and your ta your assessment goes up. Uh, that can actually force you out of where you live or force you to cut corners in other areas. And I think our legislature, Republicans and Democrats, uh, really acknowledge that. I see Senator Rankin here, a real leader in those efforts, and I want to thank them for doing that. Um, the work on our strategic action planning group on aging has really been key. Um, but as the group sunsets, we knew that we couldn't risk losing the momentum. And so that's why we were so proud to have worked with you and others on HB 221035 to create a framework for cross-agency coordination and making sure that the Colorado Commission on Aging uh, can help implement the strategic action plan on aging so it's not just words on a page, uh, but we actually move forward in more inclusive and responsive Colorado for older adults, their families, uh, our communities. And it's really an all-of-state effort, all-of-agency effort, local government, state government, breaking down silos, creating partnerships across state agencies, regional and local, the governments, community, nonprofits, private sector. Uh, and even beyond this piece of legislation, we're really excited in, in working to support uh, behavioral health needs of, of older Coloradans and Coloradans of all ages, along with some of the very important tax relief, which if you look at the entire package, it is designed in a way where I think it recognizes and benefits our older Coloradans who might be on fixed incomes uh, the most because we know that um, you know whatever you are getting from pension or Social Security doesn't necessarily keep up with inflation. Um, each of these efforts supports the Colorado way of life that we know and love, uh, protects it for years to come. Uh, you know, Colorado's uh, the place where I plan to grow old and uh, and I, I've grown a lot older just in the three years I've been governor. <laughs> three largest wildfires in the history of our state, pan once in a century pandemic. <laughs> um, the secret is really out about Colorado, uh, and it's been that for a while. And so we also deal with the increased pressure from uh, increasing population, including, by the way, is a great place to retire, uh, both for our over 400,000 veterans who served, who choose to make Colorado their forever home, uh, and others uh, who move to our state. Uh, for the great quality of life that it preserves. And a lot of our challenges are really around how we can really maintain and keep what, what keeps Colorado special in light of increased uh, growth in population. Um, and the fact that, for instance, we're facing rising housing costs, victims of our own success, it's because more people have moved here and want to live in our great state. Uh, and we also have, uh, as part of what the uh, bipartisan work at the legislature, a very strong housing uh, agenda, one of the main investments of the American Rescue Act's money is, uh, is very simply around more housing. And so working with local communities across the state to create more housing, more affordable housing across the continuum in a thoughtful way, meaning how do we do it near where jobs are, on transit corridors, uh, in areas where people can get where they need to go without further clogging uh, our roads. Um, and that's going to be important for people of, of all ages. Um, I know getting to where we are today, it's been hard work, uh, but in many ways, uh, the work is ongoing. Uh, this is just another beginning. With the passage of uh, HB 221035, this work of implementation can truly begin. Not just implementation of this bill, yes, first and foremost, but implementation of the strategic plan, and really implementation of a comprehensive approach to our vision of a Colorado for all. Whether you're nine or 90, uh, whether you're in Ridgeway or Fort Morgan, uh, whether you're, whatever your race or income level is, uh, Colorado for All wants to make sure that we can celebrate uh, what makes you unique, what makes you special, and give the opportunity to get ahead and thrive in our great state. So thank you for all your work, and we look forward to the continued uh, collaboration. By the way, I see Representative Kennedy here, who pioneered the efforts around uh, seniors who might not benefit from the homestead exemption to also get some relief uh, as well, tax relief, so very important, very important work as well. Thank you all. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! <laughs>
<laughs> Governor Polis, thank you so much for being here. You are a champion of older adults in Colorado. Uh, so thankful for your words. Um, we're going to back up the program a bit. And Jeanette was talking about Senator Danielson. Um, do you both of you want to come up here? And uh, Senator Danielson, if you have um, some words for us, that would be great. Come on up. Yeah, so I, you know, I just want to present this award to Senator Danielson for all the hard work that she has done for all of the older adults. She's going to make Colorado a better place for all of us. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you for this great award. Um, like Jeanette said, my name is Jesse Danielson. I serve in the State Senate and I represent Jefferson County. Um, thank you so much for having me here today. For those of you who don't know me too well, I, I'm a fourth generation Coloradan and um, grew up in Weld County. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, Representative Reesburg. Um, and, you know, my, my family was always central in my life. Um, both sides of my family are from here. And on our farm, you know, we, we were just brought up where you respect and um, build your lives around the elders in your community and also in your own family. You know, we took care of my great grandfather and uh, so did all of my dad's cousins and their families. So I thought that's how every family was, right? When I went to school and then, you know, became a professional working adult. Um, that's very rare, very, very rare. How many people do you know that have a, an extended family that can support older members of their own family or community in their own home um, a, as long as they possibly can? I mean, it doesn't really exist anymore. So when I ran for office in 2014, I made it clear that um, vote for me or not, one of the priorities that I was going to take on was making sure that I did what I needed to do to make sure that older people could age you know, with dignity and security the way that we should respect them uh, as long as they want and need to at home and then providing uh, necessary services for what comes after that. And I've been able to do that um, for the, I guess now, eight years that I've been at the State House, but, but with and only because of the people in this room. The very first bill that I did was on elder abuse. And um, I partnered with Dr. Cog and at the time Senior Lobby Center for Aging, um, and of course other partners like the DAs and the, at, with elder abuse units and such, but it was the very first bill that I ever introduced and continued that partnership through today. And so yes, just this year alone, and in addition to what Jeanette um, mentioned, um, I saw your top 10 and I forgot, I partnered with um, uh, Representative Ortiz on the rental car bill. And some of these uh, bills were harder to pass. Uh, Jeanette's not wrong, the, the bill that I did to hold assisted living uh, facilities accountable was a difficult political battle because they have a very powerful lobby. Um, but you know what else they don't have? Is the seniors across the state that make up that 70% and 60% of the electorate who, who stood with us and said, you know what? Um, we aren't going to stand for this anymore. And so we, we took on a tough measure. It had a lot of opposition from a very powerful lobby. And because of you all and the work that you do in the communities, we stood together and we said, no, we're going to pass this thing the way that it actually needs to pass to make a difference for the people who are living in those facilities. And you did it. And you should be really proud. And when I have these bills and we set up the testimony and the Center for Aging comes in and is able to represent the thousands and thousands and thousands of Coloradans across the state who need these, these measures passed, it's a powerful thing. Um, and so we've sent these measures to the governor. I sincerely hope that he signs them. Feel free to ask him to. <laughs> um, um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I definitely intend to continue this partnership. Uh, being from Jefferson County, you know, it, it's aging more rapidly than the rest of the state. The state is aging more rapidly than almost the entire nation. Um, we have to do what we can in the legislature to stand up for the people who built this community around us that we should be so proud of. And I'll tell you, each 
year that I do this, we bring on more um, uh, champions in the legislature. Um, and so I'm confident that next year when we come back, the pipeline bill will happen. And when you need something, so meaning bringing up more uh, medical providers for older people, you know the difference between someone who is a specialist in geriatric care when you go with your loved one to the doctor or you go yourself versus someone who has no experience with older people. It is night and day and it is 100% better and will result in a better quality of life. So we'll get it done next year, but I want you to know I'm, I'm, I renew my commitment each year and right now to you. When you need something done in the legislature, please come to me and let's work together uh, into the next four years. So uh, thank you for this very nice award and for everything you do. Hip, hip. All right, our fourth award. I uh, would like to invite Rich Morrow up here. He is with Dr. Cog and is also the other co-chair of the Colorado Center for Aging Advocacy Committee. And he is going to present an award to Representative Chris Kennedy. Thank you, Andrew. I got the old reading glasses out. So I'm, I'm very happy in, uh, to be able to to present the award for Chris, uh, Representative Chris K Kennedy today, and I'll just read a few remarks and then let him get up and talk. Uh, representative Kennedy uh, is a third term state representative from House District 23, which includes Lakewood and parts of unincorporated Jefferson County. Uh, he currently serves as the chair of uh, state civic and veteran, military and veterans affairs committees. I always just call it state affairs, but you know, that's the official name, and is a mem member of the Health and uh, Insurance Committee. And Representative Kennedy uh, has come to our attention uh, pretty much ever since he's been down at the legislature. He's taken an interest in, in, in older adult issues, has been supportive of them, has always been willing to come and, and talk to our uh, advocacy committee whenever we asked him to. Uh, and he's also taken on a, a difficult challenge uh, uh, working on uh, the senior property tax exemption and ways to improve that or address issues around it. Um, and in particular this year, uh, wanted to, to give him recognition for uh, the bill that, that was mentioned earlier uh, by the governor and others, uh, House Bill 1205. That um, and I'll let him explain it better. But it basically uh, provides a, a one-year opportunity for older adults. I think it's 65 plus still, uh, who aren't able to take advantage of the senior property tax exemption uh, under because they haven't lived in their home for 10 years or because they're renters. And um, and this was uh, we felt a, a really important way to uh, address that issue, at least for this one year, continues the conversation going forward on that issue. And uh, so for that reason, um, I'm not gonna uh, go on too much longer. I just uh, ask to have uh, Representative Kennedy come up here. And I think I've got the last award, one of the last awards. I'll just stand here for a second. Yeah. Look at us. yeah. Thanks, Rich. You bet. Uh, well, thank you guys so much. Let me begin by apologizing for both my tardiness and my attire this morning. I have shifted all the way into personal mode again. I went a couple of weeks without seeing a whole lot of my wife or my eight-month-old daughter. And so I uh, took care of my daughter all day yesterday and then failed to look at my Google Calendar even once. And so I think that was a good thing, but I was again sleeping in this morning when I got a text from Senator Danielson reminding me that I was supposed to be here. So I just rushed out the door and put on my flip-flops and a collared shirt, and decided I'd call it good. So I hope you guys can all forgive me for that. I'll get my head back in the game next week. Um, <clears throat> so I really appreciate the honor of this award, and, and I think I want to talk a little bit about where this has come from, because I, you know many of the folks in this room have heard me talking about this since 2017. You know, when I first entered the legislature, I had heard a lot of concerns about the budget impact of the senior property tax exemption. I hadn't heard as much about the equity concerns about it. But when I, when I first got to the legislature, everyone was talking about how it's going to be on the chopping block next time we have a recession. It, there's a lot of people that are concerned about issues with the program. 
and, and there maybe are ways to restructure it. Well, I started stakeholding around this in 2017 and very quickly learned that that's actually kind of a secondary issue. I mean, yes, state budget issues are always huge priorities in Colorado. We don't want to find ourselves in another situation where it's seniors versus kids in, in K-12 education, where those are competing priorities. And over the longer term, I really am hopeful that we can organize an effort to pass a progressive income tax on the state ballot that will help us adequately fund all of these programs in Colorado so that we're not in this situation where it's dog eat dog all the time. But when it comes to this specific issue, we started learning about how inequitable it is for renters. So the PTC program exists and it's wonderful, but it is not that many dollars and it's for not that many people. So for the, uh, the rest of the renters that maybe are above that threshold for the PTC, but uh, still don't have all that much money, housing is just completely unaffordable in Colorado. When it comes to home ownership, it's great if you've owned your home for 10 years, but an awful lot of people haven't. And then there's the disincentive to downsize, which has been another issue within our housing market in Colorado. So we started thinking if we can find a way to replace the senior homestead exemption with something else that helps not just senior homeowners who've been in their home for 10 years, but all senior homeowners and renters, provided that their income qualified, we thought that that would be a, a meaningful improvement. Well, it's not that easy. Uh, there are a lot of, this is an incredibly complex policy problem that we've been trying to solve, which is why in six years we haven't solved it. Uh, because there are so many things that we have to get right, right? We have to make sure the state budget impact is, is manageable, that it's sustainable, that this isn't just gonna be a one-year program that has to go away afterwards. We need to make sure it actually is providing enough support to all the seniors who need it without taking it away from seniors who may still need it that are part of the existing program. And so we did start up this conversation again this year, uh, probably in November and December, and we found that for a number of reasons it just wasn't going to be the year. But we did have a pretty healthy Tabor surplus, which gave us an opportunity to look for more equitable ways to, to distribute those funds in Colorado. So Representative Weissman, Senator Hansen, Senator uh, Coleman and I decided to introduce a bill that was just a one-year tax credit. Now, the reason this is one year, if you're going to put in place a $100 million a year tax credit in the state budget that doesn't have a deadline, you're going to be in real trouble with a budget before too many years, as my colleague on the JBC is giving me a knowing look about right now. <laughs> but at least for one year, we thought we can spend $100 million out of the Tabor surplus on something that would really be more meaningful, more effectively targeted at seniors who definitely need help in this moment affording their housing. And I've been really pleased that I got to be part of that program. So thank you so much for this recognition today. I look forward to continuing to work, for the, or work with the Center on Aging for many years to come. Thanks so much. Hip, hip. Our last award, I'd like to invite Jody back up to the stage. Um, this is a non-legislator award, and it goes to uh, Janine Vanderberg of Changing the Narrative. Woohoo! Well, uh, the CCA board, as we're recognizing our wonderful legislators, um, have definitely decided this year to uh, rep, uh, recognize one of our community members. Again, as all of them have mentioned during their award speeches, um, none of this work can be done without all of you. And uh, we want to recognize folks from the community who have done uh, amazing work raising the voice of older Coloradans. So, so this one's pretty fun as well. So let me share a little bit with you about Janine Vanderberg. Janine leads Changing the Narrative, a campaign that was started in 2018 to change the way people think, talk, and act about aging and ageism. Janine chairs the Encore Network Leadership Council, a global coalition of leaders who champion the civic, social, and economic contributions of people 50 and older, and has served uh, as a 2020 to 21 Encore Public Voices Fellow. She also serves on the board of the Women's Lobby of Colorado. I was just recently at the ASA conference and I can't tell you how many sessions I was in that changing the narrative was brought up. So this is a, a national movement, which is fantastic. In 2019, Janine created the Age-Friendly Workplace Initiative to reframe 
older workers to businesses and to make businesses more aware of the benefits of intergenerational workplaces, and on the same page, a campaign to encourage intergenerational conversations about ageism. In 2020, Janine partnered with Colorado PBS Station to produce and broadcast a series of intergenerational conversations about current and important topics, including the role of the arts in advancing social justice, digital divides during COVID-19, health equity, and ageism. Last year, Janine created and launched an anti-ageist birthday card campaign. She is in my mind every time I'm at Target buying a card to help change the cultural narratives about aging, an effort that has secured media coverage in over 15 publications. She developed and launched an age-friendly healthcare campaign this is near and dear to my heart, being with CU Anschutz, the, uh, the stewards of medical education for the state of Colorado. We are working very hard together to ensure that the future generations of clinicians that we are graduating all will not engage in ageism and healthcare practices. So with that, on behalf of the CCA, I am thrilled and honored to recognize my friend and colleague, Janine Vandenberg. Family take pictures. Yes. Okay. <laughs> For the Christmas card. Jody, thank you so much. Um, when Jody called or reached out a few weeks ago, I was so um, shocked and honored, and I'm, I'm really appreciating being here today. Um, and I want to say to everybody I've run into and maybe not recognized, I realized that the last time I saw many of you was before the pandemic. And despite those Zoom filters, you all look so much better in person. So thank you. Um, our work at changing the narrative, one, and I want to uh, uh, recognize our friends at Next 50 Initiative, Chandra and Amy, uh, is possible because of their incredible investment and in what we've been able to do. Um, before the pandemic, and how I met many of you in this room was I was traveling around the state um, doing workshops on reframing aging. And in every single community, whether it was the Eastern Plains or Northern Colorado, Southern Colorado, the Western Slope, Delta County, where my husband and I now live, um, older Coloradans, their voices, what I kept hearing was one thing, we want to work. We want to work, and often there are barriers that get in the way. And that was why we started the Age Friendly Workplace Initiative. So. All of you, to me, are living proof of what happens when we allow older Coloradans uh, to be involved. All of these achievements that we've heard about today are because older Coloradans, many of you in the room, in partnership with the younger people in the room, so the benefit of intergenerational connection, um, achieve these things. When we allow older Coloradans not just to be served, but to have agency and to stand up. These are the kind of things that we accomplish. So I want to thank all of you, and I've got to thank my friend and colleague, Chris Gierkin. A lot of those accomplishments that you cited were actually <laughs> Chris Gierkin's um, heavy work, uh, certainly around intergenerational connection and ageism in healthcare. So thank you all for the work that you do. I'm really excited. I am so honored. And um, yeah, thank you, everyone. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I have one more thing, and it was actually, um, because Jeanette brought her beautiful grandchildren. Um, so one of the things, you all have these postcards on the table, and my favorite a quote is today, this is what we all have in common in the room, right? Today for each one of us is the oldest we've ever been and the youngest we will ever be. So think about that before you go to sleep tonight, right? If we are fortunate, we are all aging. Um, and so when we're doing this work, all of us, everybody in the room, whatever piece of it you own, we're doing it not just for us, we're doing it for generations to come. So Jeanette, thank you for bringing your grandchildren to remind us of that. Thank you. Hip hip. There you go. Those are our great award winners for this year, 2022. Um, now we want uh, to do a couple of other thank yous and honorable mentions. Um, I would like Rich Morrow to come up, and I would like Jeanette Hensley to come up, and please give them a huge round of applause. Thank you. 
Rich, if you want to speak afterwards to this slide and uh, what um, Senator Janal and Representative Young have done, you can do that. But I wanted to talk about these two people, Jeanette Hensley and Rich Morrow. They are the co-chairs of our advocacy committee, which means for four long months, they have helped us to look through all of these different bills. Um, on Monday mornings, talking through them, helping us to understand them, helping to equip our older adult advocates to go to the Capitol, to testify, to understand how to talk to their legislators, all of that equipping. They have spent so many hours testifying themselves until midnight a few times. They have done so much work, it is hard for me to encapsulate it all in this moment. But we are so thankful for what they have done. Please give them an, another huge thank you for what they've done for Colorado Center for Aging this year. So I was just going to take, take a couple uh, minutes to also acknowledge um, a couple of other legislators, um, primarily the uh, prime sponsors of uh, House Bill 20, uh, 1035, the Modernization of Older Americans Act. Uh, I, I know Representative Mary Young is here in the back. Uh, I don't think I've seen Senator Janal here, um, but I did want to recognize them. And just uh, for those of you, representatives, you want to just stand up for a minute <laughs> so everybody can see you. Thank you. Um, Representative Young represents House District 50, which is Greeley, Evans, and Garden, Cis Garden City, which, by the way, I think is the same district that Jim Reesberg uh, represented uh, a few years ago, right? OK. Um, and uh, she was elected into the House. Is it, is, are you on your third term? This is my second, second term. term. See, time flies. Okay, that's it. Uh, and she's on the, the uh, Public and Behavioral Health, House Public and Behavioral Health and Human Services Committee and Vice Chair of the Education Committee. Um, representative has uh, been interested and helpful with aging issues. Uh, from the from the day, you know first year that she she came into the legislature uh, last year she also helped uh, co-sponsor with Senator Danielson uh, Senate Bill 290 that uh, was the uh, Area Agency on Aging grant fund and um, uh, was turned into uh, what was it uh, House Bill 185 I think this year that. Uh, changes, the, it makes that permanent and uh, expands it into an, a strategic investments on aging fund. And, uh, I, and so we want to honor her for that work, at, but particularly for House Bill 1035 this year. And um, Senator Janal, who represents uh, Senate District 14, which is basically Fort Collins, uh, has also uh, been an advocate for older adults um, when she was in the in the House, and and now that she's she's in the Senate, and um, we've always uh, um, appreciated her support. And uh, one of the things I liked actually about both Representative Young and uh, Senator Janal, uh, whenever we've had conversations with them, they've always made a point of. Uh, mentioning that whenever they have bills presented to them or they're reviewing bills, they're always looking at those bills with the uh, aging lens, so to speak. They're looking to see, is aging uh, mentioned in here? Should it be mentioned, uh, et cetera? And so we need to see more of that uh, from legislators uh, in, in our uh, uh, General Assembly. Uh, so with that, I just... I uh, wanted to just take that couple minutes that Andrew allowed me to have uh, to, to make sure that they got the recognition for the work that they're doing as well.
recording in progress. Oh, we're recording. Yeah, see, uh, I didn't intend for this to happen, so we're shooting from the hands. Give me some encouragement. Thank you. Uh, so if we can get him here, I'm also going to invite uh, Yolanda Webb and Kara Harvey there with the Colorado Department of Human Services uh, to the stage. They're going to speak to the Older Coloradans Act and the implementation of it. Uh, Jared Hughes is the one that is the senior policy advisor to the governor on aging, and he's the one that penned the Older Coloradans Act. So he's going to speak to us a little bit about what the act is, and then they're going to speak a little bit to the implementation of it. And um, we'll see if I can uh, get this to work here. If you guys want to come up onto the stage, I see Jared on my screen. I just need all to see him on yours. Let's see if I can get this going here. And you're ready to go. Hey, there you go. There he is. Everybody say hi. Modern technology, Jared, we're so glad that you're here with us. Everyone give him a hit hit. spending time with us, being willing to be with us here uh, this morning, even though you are in the throes of COVID. Andrew, I, I can't hear you, so can you hear me? Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me all right? I'm on mute. I'm on mute. Have you ever had a mute? Like every five minutes? Okay. I'm not on mute anymore. Can you hear me, Jared? I can hear you. Okay, one more time. Hit, hit. So much that even though you are in the throes of COVID, you're spending time with us here this morning. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. And I, uh, yeah, in, in my infinite wisdom, I went and uh, caught COVID the last week of session. So that's always great. Um, and, uh, but uh, no way to celebrate or wrap up a very busy last um, five months. So I, I really do want to thank all of you in the room that were a big part of this bill. Um, I think it was something that we were very intentional about kind of setting out and kind of having a having a very collaborative process and making sure that we engaged um, as broadly as we could. And so um, I also really want to thank uh, Representative Young and Bradfield and Senators Rankin and Janal for being kind of primary partners and leaders on that work. Um, I also really want to thank Representatives, uh, Representative Kennedy and Senator Danielson for their attention to older Coloradans over the years. It's been an honor to work with you all. And um, I think uh, as kind of legislative leaders in this space, I look forward to more of it. Um, and then I think I, I think I still have my YouTube up and muted. And I think I see Yolanda and Kara standing up there. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank you as well um, for kind of being my partners in crime in this work and uh, helping shepherd it all along. So um, it's just uh, really been a great process along the way. And I think that um, when you really kind of look at the bill, I, I sometimes think that it kind of looks a bit mundane on its surface and that it might not really appear to carry um, too much weight, um, if you will. And I think that, uh, you know, you kind of look at it and you say, we changed some words, we tweaked some language, we added some new duties and new responsibilities, kind of, um, so what, right? Um, what does all that mean? But the words are very important, um, as Janine has taught us over the years, the way we speak and the way we think and the words we use carry a lot of weight. And they're particularly important when they become our law because laws impact behavior. And if uh, done strategically, those behaviors can result in organizational action and systemic change. Um, you know, those words that we settled on that we really want to drive that behavior change and organizational and institutional knowledge shift. Um, we planned carefully and uh, we asked folks from AARP, from Center for Aging, from Alzheimer's Association, from the area agencies on aging, Dr. Cog, all of you for your input along the way. And again, I just thank you for that. But that language and those words we settled on really indicate that we, we must change our approach um, to the way we address aging issues and the way that we work. Um, 
Albert Einstein said that the measure of intelligence is the ability to change. And Winston Churchill said that uh, to improve is to change and to be perfect is to change often. Um, you know, I don't think that we will ever reach a point of perfection or a point of finality in this work because the nature of public policy is in response to social conditions and social conditions are fluid and variable and constantly changing. Um, so to that point, there is little value in being rigid or maintaining the status quo um, when the world is constantly changing around us. Um, and this is particularly true in law and policy that is based on and have their merits considered within a specific social and historical context. Um, this isn't a revolutionary idea, but I think it's an important point um, because based on our reality and where we are currently with our demographics, we had to revisit kind of our guiding principles and our guiding laws and ask, does this put us on the path forward that we need to be on? Does this get us to where we need to be in five years, 10 years, 15 years, and 20 years? Um, I think it comes as no surprise, given where we are, that when Yolanda and Kara and I sat around kind of having these conversations, our, our answer was no. Um, we didn't feel like the Older Coloradans Act in its form, which was largely written in um, 1963, actually two years before the Older Americans Act was passed. I believe entirely that the language and the words used made sense then, um, but we know that we live in a very different world than we did in the 1960s. We live in a very different world than we did in the spring of 2020. Um, so what we did was kind of go in and take a look at what we had in place in light of um, the coming sunset of our strategic action planning group on aging and really use House Bill 1035 to create a new foundation that we could build upon. Um, it's not the whole house, you know, it, it needs, still needs walls and floors and a roof um, and uh, furniture. It, it, it needs all of that to still be built around it. And the bill itself does not capitalize on all the opportunities our older Coloradans bring to our communities, nor does it immediately solve the issues that older Coloradans and their families might struggle with on a regular basis. But what it does is it reframes the way we think and strategize and collaborate, not only across state government, but also with our federal partners, regional and local and community-based partners. Because at the end of the day, the state is the middle mile. Um, we, are, um, we are reliant on nonprofits and the private sector and local governments and community-based organizations to truly drive change at the community level. And we acknowledge that and accept that. And that theme I think is constant throughout House Bill 1035. It changes the way we do business and it changes our vision for the future and the goals we set out to achieve. Um, you know, we have a tremendous opportunity with this bill um, and we all have a role to play in it. Um, you know, providers, advocates, private industry, nonprofit leaders, local and regional governments. Um, I, I don't expect us to all be aligned uh, all of the time. And I think we may disagree on which parts of the house to build next and how to do it. But we all own a piece of this puzzle and we all have to be partners together, whether or not we agree some days and uh, disagree on others. Um, but I think the important piece here is that we have to have a solid foundation to take our next steps because our goals and our ideals and our vision are unachievable if we misstep initially. By building that solid foundation rooted in what we see and experience today, um, I think we set ourselves up for success long-term and in the short term. And that is what we did by modernizing the Older Coloradans Act. Um, and it's very possible that others might need to tweak it and modify it and update it down the road. And I think we should welcome that um, so long as that adaptation is based on current context and is considered to, um, at least widely considered by community stakeholders and um, to be leading us in that right direction. Um, so uh, I will I'll, I'll wrap up here um, just kind of at a, a high level. And I think, um, you know, I have um, often felt that there are 
there are few experiences more universal than aging. Um, we are all doing it. You know, Janine said we are the we are the oldest that we will be and the youngest that we will be at this moment in time. Um, yet is consistently something that we brush aside and put into a box and leave in the corner until we're absolutely forced to open it up and address what's inside. And um, I consider that a relatively stubborn approach to a universal experience. And so I would challenge us all to be communicative and realistic and adaptive to our own personal changes across our lives instead of hiding from that universal reality. I believe that we need to own that and acknowledge it. And if we are able to do that individually, then that can impact in its aggregate organizational and systems change and the way we think, talk, and strategize about planning for later life. Um, so, you know, the tools that have uh, available to you all in the room that are available to the Colorado Center for Aging um, through our kind of new empowered work through the Colorado Commission on Aging, um, we invite you to be a part of that. I encourage you all to participate in um, the nonprofit world. Also participate in the state policy world. You know, show up to your local government meetings, show up to your city council and your county commissioners and have these conversations and share your successes and your challenges. Because the more we talk about this, the more people understand it and the more they start talking about it and they feel comfortable with these words. Um, so uh, I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish. And I really just thank you all for your work. Um, I regard many of you as friends and uh, mentors. And so I'm just incredibly grateful uh, for the work we've been able to accomplish. Um, and I'll stop there. So thank you. Jared, thank you for your words and for showing up this morning. Um, we're going to turn it over to Yolanda and Kara. Um, so if you guys want to, I don't know, Jared, if you can hear them. Hopefully you can. If not, um, if there are questions afterwards, I'll reiterate them to you in case you want to field those questions. But Yolanda and Kara, please uh, let's know about what we call Radins Act and what's next for it. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Kara Harvey with Division of Aging and Adult Services at CDHS. And Yolanda, we played rock, paper, scissors, and I lost, so I get to speak first. Um, but thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Andrew and CCA, for inviting us here. Thank you to uh, Representative Young, Bradfield, Senators uh, Janal and Rankin for the wonderful work on House Bill 22-1035. Um, and especially thank you to Jarrett. Uh, yes, we worked <laughs> lots of hours um, on just really refining this bill uh, to what it is today. Uh, for implementation, well, actually, let me just kind of step back and just a couple more thank yous. Um, thank you to all of you in this room, um, to the Strategic Plan on Action group, um, to our current Commission on Aging folks, that you all really had a great part in the stakeholdering of this whole process, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, I would be remiss to just call out my uh, former and current CCOA, Commission on Aging, commissioners for all the work they have done um, the past, whatever 1963 minus 2022 is. Um, so anyway, just wanted to really shout out to the commissioners on aging. Um, we are looking forward to this new commission on aging and um, just really, I'm very excited about it. Um, I worked in the uh, intellectual and developmental field for 25 years before I came to the state, but my um, education is in gerontology and that's where my passion is as well. So. I feel really kind of right at home here. Um, so for as far as implementation goes, I think we really started implementation when we started talking about this bill and how it's gonna look. And that involved all of you. So again, appreciate that work, um, that starting of the implementation. This is a work in progress. Um, I have the act here. I have all my highlighted different colors of the sections. So. At the department, what we're really going to do is really focus on each of these sections, focus on the Commission on Aging um, revisions, focus on the Technical Advisory Committee, um, and then also, of course, Lifelong Colorado that was also added this year. Uh, as far as the Commission on Aging, I, I have to plug this, and I, I believe you all have put this in your newsletters, but really, really need some applications. We have quite a few now. 
Um, we have about 37 and probably more than that, but really want to look at a wide variety, diverse group of people to serve on this new Commission on Aging, where we can really do some really great work for our older Coloradans. So please, send it up far and wide, um, wherever you need to go, but uh, I think that's, you know, as far as implementation goes, again, work in progress, but really need your help in implementing this, um, in this, in this bill and legislation. So please reach out to myself, Yolanda, Jarrett. We're all here, we're all available. We all have our virtual doors open. Um, and so I just, again, thank you so much for allowing us to be here and really talking about uh, this really great legislation and I'm really excited. So um, I'm probably not as energetic as Andrew, but, um, but this is very exciting for us, um, for the future of our older Coloradans. I'm Yolanda Webb. I'm the director for the Office of Adult Aging and Disability Services. And I am going to steal your thing and say, let's say hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Thank you all again for allowing us to be here and to present on the Older Coloradans Act. I want to thank Senator Janal, uh, Senator Rankin, Representative Young, and Representative Bradfield who really uh, leaned in uh, to this. You know, we share one thing in common in this room. Janine's talked about it. Jarrett talked about it. We're all aging, right? And the work that my office does is not just for the work of those of us in this room, those of us over 60, um, but it's for folks like my granddaughters and your granddaughters, right? The policies that we write, the systems and the structures that we put in place are for today and for tomorrow. And so we have to think very carefully about those. In 2015, there were 585,250 adults over the age of 65 in Colorado. And the one thing that I heard you say today, Andrew, that's going to play a huge part in the implementation of this Older Coloradans Act is inclusion. The voices of those who require the services and support have to be heard. And we have heard over and over and over again. And one of the, the roles that I also play outside of being the office director is I have the pleasure of being the co-chair for the Health Equity Commission over at CDPHE. And we talk about aging all the time and what that looks like in order for us to help older Coloradans to age well. My office is going to play a big part of that, especially since the Older Coloradans Act has not been um, updated since 1963. I had to count. I was four. <laughs> That's a really long time for us not to take into consideration that we all share this universal thing uh, amongst us. And so here's some of the things that my office is going to be looking at as we begin to implement the Older Coloradans Act. And I'm going to go through what that act really does require of us but my office, I, I've been here three years in Colorado, and I was, was blessed and grateful um, to be able to be asked to serve in this role. Um, when the, the offer was made, I was here 30 days later. I didn't know a soul in Colorado, and I have met some amazing folks like Janine, um, Representative Young, Senator Rankin, I just really folks that would help me understand this system. But I was also questioning this system from the very first day I got here. I wanted to know why we were not doing some things differently for older Coloradans. And so I started asking a lot of questions. And I started pushing us, my office, the folks in CARES division, to do things differently, to see things through an equity lens so that we could begin to put those services and supports in place. And so here's the impact that the Older Coloradans Act has on all of us. And when I say all of us, I mean the universal all of us. Income disparities for seniors, housing, transportation, health care, the environment, climate change, livable communities, and access to outdoor spaces for seniors. Food, health disparities are food deserts, physical and mental health, behavioral health supports for seniors, and caregiving. I just entered the caregiving realm. 
Did you know the average age of a caregiver is 63? Last week, my mom came and made the decision to, to move to Colorado from Alabama. I will now become her full-time caregiver. I am 63 years old. I am that statistic. And so it was imperative for me to look at this and the changes that we can now make through this modernization of the Older Colorado Act. It was imperative that I looked at this through this lens of equity, through this lens of inclusion. So here's some of the things that we're going to be doing, and here's some of the things that the Act requires for us to do. As Kara mentioned, as Jared has mentioned, it requires that we reorganize the Commission on Aging from a 17-member organization to 19 in order to coordinate and implement the strategic action plan on aging and to then make recommendations. So that's our first step in implementation. We're going to reorganize that commission. We're going to empower that commission to begin to make some real decisions and to help us make real policy for seniors here in the state of Colorado. We were also asked under this uh, modernization to appoint a full-time position in my office that will not report to Kara's office, but will report directly to me to help us do the research and to begin to look at what else is needed in the state of Colorado. So we're going to be partnering with all of you to get that work done. The other thing that it required us to do was to convene a technical advisory committee. And that's comprised of the key state agencies that we work with. That's housing, transportation, all of those things that are the social determinants of life my office is now going to be coordinating through this technical advisory committee. How then do we move this forward? Not just the act, but the implementation, the real seeing, and the benefits of what this modernization can do in the lives of people. Not just those that are already there, but for those that are coming behind us. It also enabled us to create what Kara talked about was this lifelong Colorado initiative within my department and within Kara's division to coordinate this plan of lifelong communities, as I talked about, livable communities for seniors, right? Our seniors want to be able to walk in their own neighborhoods. They want to be able to have access to in-home care services that are affordable. They want to be able to have access to grocery stores. And so looking at all of those things will be a part of that lifelong Colorado as well as that technical advisory committee. And so, Andrew, with that, I'm going to stop and see if there are, are any questions. So thank you all for, again for inviting us to be here. Jared May is still here. Um, we've met our time, uh, but I would like to open up for questions. So maybe just a question or two for Carrie, Yolanda, or Jared. If you have questions about the implementation of the Older Colorado Act, how we can be involved. Uh, if you want to ask a question, I can get the microphone to you. Um, and then after a couple questions, then I will uh, conclude our time together. Anyone on their brain? There's one here. Um, will you, we do not, I'm on the National Coalition on Mental Health and Aging, and we do not have such a coalition in Colorado. We have a new uh, mental health, behavioral health director, commissioner, whatever you call her. Would you work with her to help foster the development of uh, such an organization for Colorado because there's a big difference between what's available in the Denver area and what's available in other parts of Colorado and frankly what's available in the Denver area stinks for all those folks. There is no or very few geriatric I mean, I know there is a national um, problem with respect to manpower in all of the areas related to mental health and aging, but that's one that's really 
Thank you for your comment. Would you like to address? Sure. Thank you for that question. And as you, as you may all have heard, the um, bill did pass to create the Behavioral Health Administration. And Dr. Morgan Medlock uh, is the commissioner and, and will be leading that agency. And yes, my, my office will be working with Dr. Medlock and her team uh, as we look at what are the needs of older adults um, in the behavioral health realm? Because they absolutely are different. We recognize that demographic difference. As I said, on the Health Equity Commission, these are some of the conversations that we are currently having. Uh, what those need to look like. And I think someone said it earlier, and I think it may have been you, to talk about, um, uh, Representative Danielson, to talk about the difference in, in terms of the needs when an, an older adult goes to a doctor and someone being able to identify those things. It's the same thing in behavioral health, in, in mental health care services. And so, yes, um, I am on her agenda. We are scheduled to have our conversation so she learns much more about uh, what we do in this older adult space. So thank you for that question. Can I add something just real quick, too? Yes. Um, there are applications that are open, too, for the Behavioral Health Administration Advisory Committee. Um, so that is open to anyone with lived experiences with behavioral mental health. So I encourage folks to um, either apply for yourselves or if you know people to apply for that advisory group. Thank you. That's a good comment. Uh, and one last question. No one feeling the burden? No one feeling the hard burden? All right, if that's the case, then let's thank um, uh, Yolanda and The governor looks good with confetti on him, doesn't he? <laughs> All right, so we're about, our time is about uh, over. Um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, oh, yes, I've got that. Um, older Adults, uh, or Older Americans Month is the month of May. This is the first of three events. Um, we're glad that you have uh, participated with us in this event. Um, the next event that we have is this upcoming Thursday, May 19th at 10.30 a.m. It's going to be a virtual event. Um, it's called Voices on Aging. Voices on Aging is an initiative within Colorado Center for Aging where we try to raise up people and stories of older Coloradans that might not otherwise be told. So we've got a couple great videos. One is of an older adult refugee from the Democratic Republic of Congo named Kanyere. And so we're going to hear her story. And, and then also an older adult uh, named Paula Levy, uh, who has done great work in the Woodland Park area, um, creating uh, a, an adult daycare. Her story needs to be told. Um, but then our keynote speaker will be Edna Kane Williams. Um, she is the AARP National Chief Diversity Officer. She is going to be talking about essentials and practical tips for achieving diversity, equity, and inclusion for your organization. You're not going to want to miss that. She's a great speaker, and we're very excited about that. The last of our events um, will be, oh, well, one last thing. There are surveys on your table. Do you all see them? You can't leave the room without doing your survey. Please do the survey. It's about this event. But the last question is if you would like Edna Kane Williams to address any questions about this topic, practical tips for achieving diversity, equity, and inclusion for your organization, put those questions on the bottom of your form, and she will try to field those questions at the upcoming uh, event that we're doing. And then Wednesday, May 25th, another virtual event at 10.30 a.m. We're having experts speak on aging in place or aging my way, uh, talking about aging my way with legislation, technology, home sharing, and community. So those are our last two great events. Um, thank you so much for coming. Bright Star, you have a giveaway, right? They've got a gift basket. Look under your chairs. If anyone sees a sticky note under your chair, you're the winner. And then you get a gift basket from Bright Star Home Care. 
Does anyone find there? Anyone find it? Jesse's back there. It's beautiful. Look at that. It's even got lights on it. That's amazing. It fell on the floor. Whoever finds a sticky note on the floor, oh, my mom. My mom got it. Hip, hip. That was not a plant. Last word uh, of thanks. Um, we have an intern that has been with us at Colorado Center for Aging all semester. It is not Peyton Manning, the intern. No, it is Peyton Drake, the intern. Peyton, stand up. She's helped us with lots of different committees and certainly with this event. Thank you so much for your service this semester. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors. I'm sure they'll be there afterwards if you want to speak with them more. And lastly, thanks to you all for being here for your tireless work on behalf of older adults in Colorado. Everybody say, raising the voice. Raising the voice. All right, and I will give one last hip, hip hooray to you for being here. We'll see you next year, and we'll see you for the events coming up these next couple weeks. Thank you so much, and blessings to you.